The soul is very real. Let's describe the soul for a moment. What is a soul? What is a neshama? When God created the world, he created things that never existed. Let there be light, and there was light. It had never existed before. Let there be a firmament, a heaven, it had never existed before. The sun, the moon, the stars, the water, they're all new, never existed. A soul is a little piece of God that always existed, just as God always existed. This little piece of God is, of course, alive, like God is alive. God is a living being. A little piece of him is a little piece of life. What does this soul bring with it? We know that God is kind. Chesed. The soul is capable of chesed. We know that God is all-knowing. The soul is capable of intelligence. We know that God can be strict and severe. The soul has a capacity for justice, judgment, even anger and hate. In other words, the soul has the ten faculties with which God functions as a creator. So the soul has intelligence and emotions. That's a soul. A soul can love and it can hate. It can understand and it can reason. It can be stubborn, it can be determined, it can communicate. These are the ten functions of the soul. A human soul is similar except that it's created. It's mortal. We have two souls. A godly soul with ten godly functions and a human soul with ten human functions. Now sometimes in your own mind you're thinking makes perfect sense for me to do something that isn't kosher. But on the other hand, it doesn't make sense. If it's not kosher, I'm a Jew, why am I doing that? These are your two souls reasoning each in their own way. The intelligence of your godly soul, of your Jewish soul, understands things from a godly perspective. Godliness makes sense. The human soul understands things from a human perspective. Godliness doesn't make sense. The trick is, your godly soul must teach your human soul to appreciate what is holy and godly. That way, when the soul leaves the body at the end of 120 years, it has no foreign smell. It comes back to heaven as if it had never left. In fact, it brings with it some of the human soul's energy that has now become holy. So every time we do a mitzvah, we're getting our human soul to participate in holiness. That's called tikkun olam. When you elevate your human soul to appreciate holiness and godliness, to feel for holiness and godliness, you have elevated the physical to godliness, you've made earth into heaven. And that is the whole purpose for which the soul is willing to spend 120 years in a body on earth. Here's a beautiful analogy. A princess marries a peasant. They go to live on the farm, the peasant's farm. Peasant is very devoted to the princess. After two weeks of marriage, he notices that the princess is sad. He doesn't want to question her. Thinks to himself, what could possibly make her sad? And in his peasant orientation, 
he assumes that what's making her sad is that there aren't enough potatoes. So he works harder and he brings home more potatoes. She's not any happier. He realizes, silly me, she doesn't like potatoes. It's tomatoes that are lacking. She's sad because there aren't enough tomatoes. So he works really hard, he brings home more tomatoes. She's not happier. So he fixes something in the house, the leak, the road. She, she's getting sadder. Finally, he loses his patience and he confronts her. He says, what is wrong with you? I've given you everything a human being can possibly want. How can you not be happy? So she says, I was raised in the palace. In the palace, we had the greatest philosophers and teachers and thinkers who came and delivered lectures. It was a pleasure. We had the greatest orchestras, the greatest musicians would come and perform. We had the most exotic plants in the royal gardens. These are the things I miss. I'm a princess. And when I see you trying to make me happy by giving me potatoes, tomatoes, and such, it makes me even sadder because I realize you have no idea what it takes to make a princess happy. That's the predicament of a godly soul in a body. The godly soul is a princess. The body is a very devoted husband, but it's a peasant. The body feels the soul's sadness. Sometimes we call it guilt, we call it conscience, we call it search for meaning, finding ourselves, really what it is. The soul is unhappy and the body is trying to please the soul. But what does a body know? The body assumes that potatoes, tomatoes and such will make the soul happy. And the soul becomes sadder. So what is the solution? When the princess marries the peasant, the father, the king, should send along with the princess little pieces of the palace. Some royal stuff so that on the farm, the princess will feel somewhat at home. She'll feel like a princess. And that's what God does for us. When he sends the godly soul down to earth, he sends along with us pieces of heaven, the mitzvah, the Torah. When we do mitzvahs, we run a home according to Torah. We're importing, deporting, downporting stuff from heaven that keeps us in touch with who we really are. So that even living in the body on the farm, on earth, the soul can feel like a princess and can feel at home. That is the mystery of the soul's coming and going. That is the justification for putting a delicate, sensitive princess into a very indelicate and insensitive condition and place. But in the end, the soul will have proved itself. Every soul has a beneficial effect on its body. The body and the human soul become refined because there's a godly soul there. When you get 10 godly souls together, it generates a degree of holiness that allows us to read the Torah, to say certain prayers. It's a collection of souls and that is an awesome amount of holiness. The Baal Shem Tov said that where there are 10 Jews in one room, angels are afraid to enter. This godliness transforms the world. We fix the world tikkun olam because the creator of the world has a plan. It's his world. He has a vision of what he would like it to be. And we are his agents and partners in turning the world into his kind of world. 
a world that pleases him, that welcomes him, so that he can have his home in the lowest of worlds. Bayom hahu yihiyeh Hashem echad u'shmo echad. As a result of our serving God, doing mitzvot, bringing holiness and godliness to the world, the day will come when God will be one and his world will be one with him. But that's due to our efforts. So the soul yearns to go back to heaven, feels uncomfortable, encumbered by a body, but it knows its mission and it is humble enough to accept the mission. So it goes about doing mitzvot, it goes about absorbing the holiness from Torah and then sharing it with his human soul, with his body and with the rest of the world. Shalom Aleichem. How are you? You know I do a lot of talking, a lot of Zooming, many classes, many subjects, but that's all formal stuff. Hopefully good stuff, but formal. We also have a Wednesday night meeting that's more informal and kind of um, Hamish. If you want to join us for that kind of an event, um, interactive, time for questions and so on, if you want to join us for this side of conversation, click on the link below and join us every Wednesday night at nine o'clock. Well, maybe not every Wednesday night, but we try to make it every Wednesday night at nine o'clock, a more informal chat, which uh, can be more enjoyable at times than the formal stuff. So check it out. Click on the link and join us. Try it, you'll like it.